and I hope you will get to know interesting potential partners and will be able to create powerful and successful collaborations. Thank you very much. And we start our second pitch round. Right, the water glasses are exchanged. Thank you, ladies. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, up here on stage, our first German startup enterprises that have developed interesting business models for Africa. Please welcome Dr. Jörg Kleis, Benedikt Wahler, Jenny Kohn and Tom Plümmer. Good evening, hello, hi. <laughs> so we start um, with Dr. Jörg Kleis right next to me. Your company is uh, Africa Works is the, the name and you're linking basically African graduates from German universities um, to German companies in Africa, is that right? That's correct. So yes. let's see how that works. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Why is it so hard for European companies doing business in Africa to find and retain qualified local staff? Why is recruiting such an obstacle while there are actually 50,000 African graduates from European universities every year? One of the possible answers to this question may be that while African markets are still rather small in terms of size and economic size, they're actually quite the opposite in terms of their geographic and demographic dimensions. Another possible answer to this question may be that there simply exists an information gap between those who graduate from proper institutions and those who are looking for those who graduated from proper institutions. Be that as it may, my name is Jörg Kleis. I'm the co-founder of Africa Works based here in Berlin and we put the issue of jobs and career perspectives at the center of our work. Our service is to provide a platform that serves both candidates and employers, both talent and companies, as a central digital contact point in order to bridge the existing information gap, in order to create career perspectives on the ground in their home countries. We match African talent with companies that are already there and looking for highly qualified staff or who are intending to go there. Our ultimate goal is to tackle what is called the brain drain and thereby contribute to the creation of brain gain and placing people with an impact not only on your business but on society. Our service is generally identifying the proper educational institutions, here in Germany, for example, but also in Europe. Let me give you a few examples. There is political foundations that give out stipends to African, uh, to African trainees, African students every year. Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, you know them all. You know the DAAD, the German Academic Exchange Service. And then we go about identifying all these cooperation programs from German universities, for example, Technical University of Berlin, they have a campus in Egypt, which is called El Guna. There is a cooperation between the Hochschule Mainz and the University of Addis Abeba. Or there is a cooperation that is between the Technical University of Kaiserslautern and the federal state of Rwanda, the, the Republic of Rwanda. After we invite them to sign up on our platform, the idea is to then assess and evaluate their credentials to interview them and then recommend them to our client companies. For example, our candidate pool consists of bright and open-minded people. Let's say an example, Patricia, who has just recently graduated from Technical University of Kaiserslautern, who is from Rwanda. And she does not only combine local knowledge with an open-minded and global mindset, but also holds a German degree from a, universe, from a university here, and she speaks German fluently. It's not only about us creating career perspectives with the help of German Mittelstand society, uh, corporations, but also, and this is our long-term goal, to tap not only into the academic sector, because we have all been trained academically, but to create career perspectives on the ground, we need to foster, and this is our goal as well, the vocational training sector. We are now trying to do this also with the help of corporations who wish to create such career perspectives on the ground. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Jörg. Yeah, almost three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. And we go on with someone who spent many years in Nigeria. Please welcome Benedict Vala from Startup Lions and Learning Lions. Yeah, thank you. We are Startup Lions, Learning Lions, and we are a social venture who, together with you, want to link Europe and Africa and fight poverty with digital opportunity. Remember that nice beach in Thailand from the book 20 years ago? It's still there. But these days, it's a little <laughs> bit more crowded because a lot of people have made it their temporary home and actually workplace. People you know might know as digital nomads. That was our inspiration for places that don't have tropical beaches and other means of economic opportunity. In other words, we wanted to take the digital nomad model to actual nomads. We're now in Turkana County, in the poorest part of, no uh, of Kenya. And this is where we are going, our pilot location. Our vision was that even here, we find talented young women and men who might not yet know how to switch on a laptop, but with hands-on practical training, they can be turned into digital pros who can benefit and work in the global digital economy rather than raising goats or weaving baskets. Our secret sauce for achieving this has three main ingredients. Number one, a proprietary uh, approach to digital education. Number two, an integrated business model that puts everything in place for things to succeed, even in remote Tokana, and of course, a great team. Number one, a hands-on practical training, nine months, that takes young talents ready to start into the global market. We've designed, tested, and reviewed this approach over the past three years, and now know that it works. With three months of basic training, six months of advanced training, they learn how to make movies, program websites, program mobile apps, and many other highly valuable skills for the digital world. The lectures go hand in hand with mentoring and with IT-guided self-learning for a full learning experience. Education is the core, but it takes more than that to, for the talents to actually go global from rural Africa. So, we took charge. We took charge of the solar energy, of the IT equipment, of the offices that you need. We took charge of giving, them, giving a job to every graduate rather than letting them sweat it out as freelancers. And we take charge of finding the projects for them via the billion dollar task platforms as well directly from clients from Europe and the US. And finally, number three, a wonder, wonderful people who helped to make this happen. Experienced African and European professionals with decades in business and in development. All inspired by the opportunity that digital skills afford and these opportunities also attract many more volunteers to us who come to work as experts in their field in IT and media to make it work. We've been at this since 2014 and, uh, and know that it, that it works. We've, we turned an idea into a reality on the ground with 120 graduates who are already enrolled and who are now earning money for themselves and their communities. And Sorry, it, it doesn't take that much for it to actually work. For 4,000 euros per graduate, we get it done. And these 4,000 uh, uh, euros are earned back over 14 months already, even if they just work half of the time. So we've piloted this in uh, Turkana. We know that it works. It's eminently scalable. And that's why we say to investors, let's help impact investors especially. Let's help us make this big and for companies who are looking to partner with um, innovative CSR, come talk to us. And if you're an IT or media expert who wants to change lives for better, speak to us. And for all of you who might be clients out there, out there give your digital opportunity to help fight poverty. Thank you. And our next startup, Read to You. Please welcome Jenny Kohn. Hi. 
So the mobility sector currently has a problem, which is that it's dominated by operating systems who are struggling over the largest slice of the pie. And that's to the detriment of mobility providers who want to deliver 100% connectivity to all their users across all platforms. That's where we come in. Read2U is a solution that integrates any device into a user's connected ecosystem. So what does that mean? That means that you as the end user can drag and drop content from any device to any other device seamlessly without needing to down and upload. So you can take a call on your mobile phone and then drag and drop that call into your car or a seat on a connected plane or train um, without friction or interruption, without even needing to hang up the call. We offer an end-to-end -end security layer on the cloud, so only transient data is stored on the device itself. That means the secure session stays with the user and not with the device. That means we offer a number of solutions for sustainable connectivity. We offer a solution not just for traditional mobility uh, providers, but also for multi-user devices like car sharing services. We compress data, so um, that means that we enable easy retrofit of older models and also we um, extend the life of older devices. Um, we also, for places where bandwidth is an issue because we compress the data, it means that we deliver more connectivity to more users. We have a footprint in several growing market sectors like the sharing economy and um, the connected car market. And we have a proprietary solution that operates in a unique market segment. Um, we operate on a simple white label revenue model and we are an, are an award winning solution provider for large German entities like Daimler, VW and Lufthansa. This is our team, our CEO, Gazala, who's over there in the audience, um, is ex-Google, ex-Nokia, and our programming team are marine security developers, so we work with military-grade code. We do not currently have a footprint in Africa, but we offer a solution for sustainable connectivity, and we would love to talk to partners today who might be able to help us make that happen. So thank you very much. And now we will have a look at a special drone uh, project in Tanzania, uh, distributing medication, blood bottles and vaccine to remote areas. Please welcome Tom Flimmer from Wing Copter. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, okay, that seems to be good. Uh, I have a little film, so while it's running, I explain what we did. Thank you for that. Um, and excuse me, it, somehow the laptop doesn't, doesn't really play it well, but what, has, uh, what does our drone has to do with Africa? I will tell it um, after the film. So first, how did we start it? Um, some years ago we had the idea together at our workshop where we build normally gliders. Um, how can we build a drone which is faster and can fly a far more like um, range or a wider range? Um, the idea basically was a tilt rotor mechanism combined with wings. Uh, what this is exactly, or what this exactly means, I will explain after as well. But you can see it here already. Um, it takes off vertical, so this is basically what you know as a drone uh, or a, a UAV, an unmanned aerial system. And then uh, the really benefit is, so you can start everywhere, and then the tilt rotor tilts, and you can fly like a fixed wing system. So you can really save a lot of energy which normally limits the range. And you can um, fly yeah, on a long, long, um, yeah, long flight time and with much payload. So somehow the film stopped, so I just continued. The evolution of drones, what, has, um, or what was there before we started? It was a multi-copter, so a drone which can take off vertical, it can hover. And there were fixed wing systems, which can fly on a long range, a long flight time. However, they need a runway normally to start or a catapult to launch. So, Combining both systems was a little revolution uh, when we started. It was the first system ever, and that's the wing copter. So we have a patent on our tilt rotor mechanism, which I explained a little before. So here's the detail. So we start when the rotor is up, and once it's in the air, it tilts 90 degree. Uh, sounds simple, but it's really efficient. Um, that's the wing copter finally. After the first prototype you saw, that's the final product, and even uh, quite sexy from the back. 
And <laughs> so what are we going to do with it? Um, so that's maybe the main question now. We can fly up to 100 kilometer range with one battery. We can fly up to six kilo for now. 10 kilo will be the next. And my, my dream is 100 kilo or 200. So for now, we have the two to six kilo. And uh, we can fly two hours. And up to 100, we, the last test we did was 180 kilometer per hour uh, speed. So it's very efficient, as I said. And we combine everything in the perfect delivery system. Um, we tested everything in Frankfurt before, before going to Africa, which was our plan at the beginning. We said we need to do some field tests here. So we went to a, uh, um, a hospital <laughs> and uh, we're trying to, to deliver blood, which was already part of the life bank. Um, so once again, there's a little little film I would like to show. I'm sorry again, it's not running smooth. durchschnittlich im Jahr durch Frankfurt transportiert werden. Jeder Stau kann Leben kosten. Gerade bei sogenannten Großlagen seien es Explosionen oder Flugzeugabstürze, wenn vor Ort Notlazarette eingerichtet werden müssen und der Verkehr zusammenbricht, kann die Versorgung mit Drohnen die letzte Chance sein, die Notfallärzte mit ausreichend Material zu versorgen. So, yeah, unfortunately, the laptop is a little slow. <laughs> yeah, so normally it starts when the sound comes, <laughs> but you can still see it here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the USP is the vertical takeoff, and there you can see the transition again, which is normally when it runs smooth super fast. So in three seconds, it tilts and flies like a fixed wing. So, um, I, it's really a pity with the sound. Sorry for that. Um, so this is maybe the, the another USP. We can drop exactly in front of the hospital and the drone takes off again back to the charging station. So everything we want to take now to Tanzania. And um, here we have the, the case that with a car at Victoria Lake or Lake Victoria, you need roughly four hours if the traffic is great to reach the island. With a drone, the 60 kilometer we can fly directly. We need less than an hour and we can fly several times daily. So this is basically the core idea of our test field. Um, we start next month for six months. Uh, we are hiring now, so if anyone is interested, we are looking for people who want to join this project. And we want to extend. We are now talking to the government of Rwanda. We are talking to Zambia. We are talking to several countries. And we are looking also for partnerships. I hope to see Wingcopter Flying for Life Bank soon. And uh, yeah, any other of you sitting here who thinks this is interesting, um, let's, let's talk, because we really want to scale this whole thing. And um, yeah, finally, um, I think that's it. My time is over. So I would like to invite you to talk with me for that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I would like to invite you too, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, either right now or uh, at the latest, uh, later on during our uh, poster session. But are there any questions right now already? Yes, please. Just a second. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kleis, uh, I love the project and I think it's fantastic what you did. What we are experiencing, we are working worldwide in social investments and uh, a lot in Africa. And um, so what we are trying to do as well from Germany is a lot of uh, lobbying for uh, educated Africans. We all know that we have a lot of uh, African doctors that are graduated from German university and they don't go back. They don't go back. The conditions are, uh, of course, very challenging. The hospitals in Africa and the work they can do and what they can find. And the same is in, um, in other sectors, in other branches. So, for example, we are trying at the moment to uh, convince an African man, very well educated, to go into an office in Senegal to, uh, to work there. And the conditions and the attractions are, of course, not as, uh, as in Germany. So they are asking for a car, they are asking for a good salary, they are asking for many, many things. So to get Africans, educated Africans, back to Africa to help to develop their country is a big, big job in lobbying, in convincing, and in really 
making them understand how important it is to go back and to develop the country. And this is very hard. So uh, I hope that the platform will help to bring people together, demand and education and people. And, uh, but we need as well to uh, make them understand that it's for the country and the good to go back and to develop, to help to develop it. Can I answer? Yes, right away. absolutely. Okay. Dr. Kleis. Um, I think your answer, your question can be answered from so many perspectives and entails a lot of dimensions. First of all, we can only attract those who have an inherent motivation to go back. That's the first group. The second group is the, that people, those people who have to go back because there are either visa restrictions or they have prior to their studies signed um, signed scholarship uh, contracts according to which they are required to go back. This happens as well. Now, the medical sector is a sector in which the situation on the local ground does not often reflect what they are used to. And um, I understand that businesses are having a hard time convincing. So what you might consider doing is tapping into the young graduates pool of those people who in the first place are considering to go back because of family ties, for example. We cannot convince people to sign up if there is no such motivation. Neither do we want anyone to go to Africa if they don't plan to. If they want to stay here, that's their free choice. Um, but about marketing such a vacancy, that of course will also require, and this is what we're experiencing now with companies, a good package. It's no longer a world in which you can simply go to Africa and expect that um, Labor is cheap. In fact, um, housing is expensive in Lagos or in Nairobi. So that is also something that we're trying to do is um, mediating between the two sides. How can there be a package that is really convincing? How there's a uh, perspective and how does that person not give up its living standards that, it's, that the person is used to? Um, but younger graduates might in fact be a solution to this. I think we can ch exchange a couple of ideas. Absolutely, afterwards. Thank you very much. Big applause again, please, for Jenny, Benedict, Jörg and Tom. Thank you very much. And we have, ladies and gentlemen, another four startups uh, from Germany that could be interesting for the African market. Please welcome Patrick Meinels, Martin Barth, Jesse Pielke, Gregor Henn and Nico Höhler. who is bringing something here, Nico. We are very curious to learn more about that. <laughs> but let's start with Patrick, uh, right next to me. Thank you, ladies. Um, dear Mr. Excuse me. Is there a clicker there? The, the clicker, thank you. <laughs> we start with Patrick, there you go. Thanks from Better West, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Patrick from Better West, CEO and founder. And we are the leading German crowdfunding platform for energy projects in Germany as well as in African countries. So we have a very huge climate change challenge during the next couple of decades. There are currently more than one billion people around the globe uh, who have a lack of um, access to energy. 95% of them are living in South um, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, at the same time, here in Germany, 50% of the energy that we are consuming is wasted. So why can't we change this problem? Why can't we find a solution? There's a huge lack of capital. Uh, for example, banks are not really willing to finance uh, especially the small and medium-sized uh, kinds of projects. Um, if you look at many African countries, you have very high uh, interest rates that makes it very difficult to finance uh, such um, projects. And there's an overall em overemphasis on the large-scale projects um, which uh, we want to change. And what we're doing is we are mediating between um, small investors, people like you and I, 
uh, in Germany who invest in uh, energy projects um, uh, like the one I will show you in a few seconds uh, in Nigeria. And the investors are just normal people. They can start investing from 50 euros. So in Germany, I would say 70 or 80 percent of the German population might be uh, able to invest in such a project. Um, it can go up to 10,000 uh, euros as a single investment due to the German regulation, but that's the range of uh, investments that we are talking about here. On the other side, we have projects like these, um, solar home systems uh, for some uh, off-grid uh, village in Nigeria, and they needed um, around uh, 112,000 euro to finance a um, small-sized micro, so-called microgrid, uh, or in this case, a solar home systems in, um, in uh, just a normal village. And in this case, about 230 German investors paid 50, 100, maybe 1,000 euro to finance these projects. They get payback um, within four years and get an interest rate of about 8.5% as compared to 20 or 25% um, interest rate that this company would have had to, um, to pay in Nigeria. So far, we uh, finished 60 projects, uh, funded uh, roughly 7 million euros by people like you here in the room. Um, we have more than 5,000 users. Hopefully, uh, this evening, we have at least 400 more, uh, I would hope. Um, and so far, we nearly um, uh, reduced CO2, CO2 emissions about um, 100,000 tons. So we are very happy to uh, talk to you if you have access to um, projects like these, um, microgrids, solar home systems, um, exchange of uh, heating, uh, exchange of cooling systems, um, everything that uh, is used to generate energy and to save energy. And uh, maybe w the one or other from you guys uh, will become an investor himself. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. So you have already uh, financed uh, projects in Africa, but you are obviously looking for more opportunities. And so is he. Our next project is about crowd investment too. Please welcome Martin Barth. Good evening, everyone. My name is Martin Barth, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ecoligo. And Ecoligo provides commercial and industrial clients in developing country with clean and affordable solar power. This is Fred. He's the CEO of Blue Skies Limited, a fruit processing company in Ghana with 1,500 employees. And he, like 500 other CEOs in Ghana, recently said that the high cost of power is the number one obstacle of doing business. Of course, Fred knows about solar solutions but he also knows about the high upfront investment required for these. Without finance, Fred keeps on paying high cost of energy, often two times more expensive than in Europe. As Ecoligo, we change this. We provide a fully financed solar as a service solution where Fred and his company are actually paying only for the electricity that we generate with the solar system. For Fred, this means 50% less cost when he buys his electricity and a predictable energy cost so he saves his business of future price increases from the utilities. We digitalized the entire process of the projects to reduce our cost. So from project development to the digital remote monitoring, everything is digital nowadays. And we work with local partners who are qualified by us to do the actual project execution. We raise the capital also through crowd investing on the platform ecoligo.investments. And like mentioned by Patrick, crowd investing is really important because local banks focus on small loans with high interest rate and very short duration that are not suitable for solar projects. And development banks such as KFW or DEG, they focus on large scale projects leaving commercial and industrial projects without access to finance. This year alone, we realized three projects uh, where we invested 404,000 euro with our crowd investors. We have around 50 million 
volume in projects outstanding, where we issue the next two for our investors in November. So as a crowd investor that you all may become, 5,000 euro of investment, not only with a 5.5% interest rate per year gives you a 25.7 overall return over five years, but you also save 4.1 tons of CO2 emissions every year. And further, you help economic growth because you save our clients 15,000 euro in energy uh, cost. Our management team has more than 15 years of experience in Africa, predominantly in Kenya and Ghana, where we also recently opened our office on the African continent, because we believe that local presence is a key for long-lasting and sustainable projects. If you know anyone like Fred, then come talk to me so we can get him solar and we can get it financed. Thank you. And from Africa Green Tech, we welcome Jesse Pielke and Gregor Hen, and it's about power and energy supply. Ah. Good evening, uh, Frau Ministerin Zypris. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present um, in front of you this evening. Um, my name is Gregor Hen, and I brought my colleague Jesse Pielke. We travel today from Heinburg, close to Frankfurt and um, Darmstadt. To just stop it, just stop it. We can later on. Yeah, I just want to say something before. Yeah, we are representing a company called Africa Green Tech. Um, Africa Green Tech. Uh, what is it about? We are building, we are selling, and we are operating mobile solar power plants. And with that said, I want to show you some moving pictures to give you a better understanding what it's all about. Hello also uh, from my side, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the movie has already started. I will try my best to narrate a little bit what you are seeing. Um, as we have already spoken about the difficult logistics systems in Africa, um, that's also where we are active in the first step. So what you can see is our solar tainer being delivered in uh, Malul Nomad in Niger. Uh, just recently, Malul Nomad is a, is a small village in very, very uh, rural Africa. Um, our solar tainer is a mobile solar power plant. So what we do is we operate and build these mobile solar power plants, um, which once they're set up, act as a hub for Africa, for rural Africa. Because as we know, energy supply is a humongous and huge problem. Uh, in those areas. Here you can see the um, villages in Amal, of Amalul Nomad um, just awaiting what is inside because up to that moment just there they didn't know what was inside the container. Um, so what we put inside is all the technical components and solar panels as well um, so that we can easily set it up as a turnkey solar power plant once it arrives. You can see my colleague in the bottom left here, uh, engineer from Darmstadt as well. Um, the setup of the container is comparatively very easy. It's very fast. Within just two days, you can set up the whole power plant and produce power right from the get-go. Um, the solar power plant delivers enough energy for a whole village, which means that it's not um, small solar power plants in individual households but instead um, a sufficient replacement for even diesel generators, which cause a lot of emission problems in Africa as well. Inside you can see all the technical components again. And this is a beautiful moment uh, where the children for the first time had light in the evening and just started dancing the whole night through. Um, that's us, Africa Green Tech. Thank you. Um, I just brought a graphic as well. I don't know if we can pull that up. There you can see it again. I just want to lose a quick word about that as well. Because in the first um, moment, you just think as of, of our solar power plant as a 
yeah, as a solar power plant, but it's a lot more. It actually um, is a, just a foundation for a lot of other services like internet access, which we can supply, water purification, cooling, and mobility and transport. I would be very happy if you came to talk to me, you even have live data um, with me on my phone via the internet connection to the container in Niger. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our last pitch in this round is Nico Höhler from Tech Format Life Science. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nico Holler and I'm Managing Director of Nelonbox and at Nelonbox we are revolutionizing modern cold chain logistics. Worldwide there are more than 250 million people somehow depending on temperature sensitive drugs and medication that need to be kept at either 2 to 8 or 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. While delivering these drugs is already a big hassle in countries with a highly developed infrastructure, it gets worse once we get to countries where the infrastructure is not yet that developed. If we're talking about vaccination campaigns in Africa or any temperature delivery in A Africa, we'll usually see situations that look like this. We'll have an insulated container with a single ice pack in the inside that is then transported in a Jeep or on a motorcycle or even on a camel. And if worse comes to worse, we'll even see helicopters flying uh, when it is a very time critical uh, delivery process. So we thought this is not very good because all these delivery types have one problem in common. And this problem is that once you put in the medication, once you put in the ice pack, once you close the insulated container, the clock is always ticking. There's no way you can extend the runtime of these deliveries except that you find a refrigerator on your way, but usually you won't find that one. So we thought we may got to make it better. We got to make a single electrical solution that runs on battery that can actively control the temperature in the inside. And that is what we invented. It's called Nelonbox, and we can actively control the temperature between either 2 to 8 degrees or 15 to uh, 25, deg uh, 25 degrees. Since we run on electricity, we are battery powered with a runtime of up to 24 hours on one charge. If you swap the battery, you can get another 24 hours and another and another. Since we are running on electricity, we can also run our box in stationary use using a single solar panel in this size. And we can also plug in our solution into a cigarette lighter plug so we can all always recharge our device. Since we are running on electricity, we can implement uh, very good alarm functions and real-time tracking functions. So we are tracking humidity, temperature, light, access, and motion all in real time so we can also have proof of the delivery process. How do we do that? Well, we have invented a very energy efficient cooling technology at the Technical University of Darmstadt that is enabling um, electronically controlled cooling in a mobile device for the first time and we filed our first patents already. So we are not only the uh, enabler for temperature sensitive medication delivery, but also the enabler for any vaccination campaign. So that is what we're striving for every single day. And now I say thank you and I'm open for questions. So this is the charging station actually, could be. Yes, yes, this is a solar panel and you can plug in the uh, cigarette lighter plug of nylon box directly to the solar panel so it can recharge during the day, run on battery during nighttime, recharge during the day and so on and so forth. So it's also a stationary refrigerator if you want it that way in a vaccination campaign or in a mobile hospital or anything like that. This is all very, what I would like to know is, this is all very technical and uh, logistic, your, your help uh, that you've just presented. But um, maybe in your case, Nico, uh, how, to which extent does it touch you personally to, to help in this way? Uh, it's a very uh, human and emotional issue, isn't it, also? Yes, um, that's true. Well, it's very difficult to get uh, the delivery right. Um, we've not yet delivered um, blood or vaccines in Africa, so that is what, why we're here for today, because we are looking for partners in pilot projects, and hopefully we'll send, uh, then see smiling faces that just got their medication the perfect temperature. 
Like you, Jesse, told us about the, the, the smiling faces when the lights went on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, especially for the team that was abroad, it was uh, a huge moment. Um, also, what I wanted to note is that we've heard um, a lot of great solutions, um, but our solution actually lays the foundation so that many, many people can have access to new markets and new solutions as well. Because there's a lot of people who live in rural Africa, um, and simply because uh, of the place where they live, they have no chance of uh, access to modern technology at all. Your questions, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Hi, they Shaba from Shaba and Rampton and Green Building Solutions in South Africa. I absolutely love hearing all about solar with everyone who's in the panel here, so I got very excited. Um, my question is for Ecoligo, um, if I pronounce that right. What is your criteria for your clients? So as in, if someone wants solar, because a lot of the times in Africa and in South Africa, people will say, I want to do solar, exactly what you said, but we don't have funding. So what is your criteria for someone if they have a project and what's the maximum size that you can fund for? And my question for Africa Green Tech is what is the size that you're sizing your systems um, for the mobile solar? And um, have you ever had any challenges of maintenance, especially in rural Africa? Are you training people um, so that they know how to maintain their own systems? And also in terms of theft, um, have you ever had anyone trying to steal panels or inverters or any of that? So just to get a sense of those questions. But well done to every single one of you and to the panel before. We love that. Yeah, sorry, I'm passionate about Africa and it's good to hear people talking accurately about us. So thank you. <laughs> so th thank you for the question. Um, in terms of finding the clients, we actually just want them to be um, a business that is operational for a few years and is showing signs of growth. So we do a due diligence on the clients and look at their financial statements. That is the key decision, really. Um, in terms of the maximum size, we are, as BetterVest is, uh, limited by the German regulation on crowd investing, which allows us a maximum of 2.5 million euro per project. In electrical capacity, that is around two to two and a half megawatt, which can serve a large industrial factory. Yeah, so it's actually sufficient for the projects that we are targeting in um, Sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you. Um, okay, so I hope I remember all the details of your question. Um, so size-wise, the container is about six meters wide and 40 meters long. Um, if you are talking about power output, that would be 41 kilowatt peak uh, for a solar system with 290 watt panels. Um, theft, we had no problem with. Um, we employ people locally uh, who service um, our power plants um, and also who are securing them. So we actually um, put walls around it. I mean, that doesn't um, take away from people who really, really want to steal something. Um, but we've also gained the knowledge that people you know, they know what kind of chance uh, a solar attainer can be for them. So um, they're really hesitant or would, there's a great, great barrier for someone to actually go and steal something from there because um, rural communities are often very, very connected. Um, and when something is lost, uh, it doesn't really take long to figure out who it has been. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, all you guys. There's another question or oh, we have some little time left. Okay, and a last question, please. The microphone is coming up. Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, the great presentations. My question goes to uh, Egoligo, and it's particularly about uh, investor protection. I know it's a big challenge when you do crowdfunding uh, or crowd investing, and uh, especially in Africa. So how do you guarantee investors that their that, yeah, 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 funds will not get lost? Um, it's, a, it's a very good question because we get that question quite often. Um, the first step is to make sure that the projects that we present to our crowd investors are thoroughly selected and already run through a due diligence, which I briefly mentioned here. We look at the financial performance of our clients to make sure that they actually can 
pay for the system. Secondly, our energy option is cheaper than the grid supply from the utility. So it's a, a business decision for the clients to actually continue paying us before they pay the more expensive uh, providers. We also have every project that we put on the platform run through an external technical due diligence done by Allianz Climate Solutions. So Allianz, the big insurance company, they guarantee with a very simple traffic light system that the projects fulfill all quality criteria. We also are on ground making sure that we have operation and maintenance teams and can ensure the long lasting life of the asset. Um, and we always have fallback options. So that means um, in case a client really goes bankrupt and cannot afford to pay the system, we can always feed back into the national grid and sell electricity to the utility. So there's always a plan B in place to make sure the crowd investors get their investment back. And on top of that, it's a rather short time period of five years that the crowd investors give their capital. Yeah. Maybe I can add something that is also true for both of us. Um, the investors invest very small amounts of money and can spread it over many projects. So the whole portfolio of projects they invest in is um, yeah, more risk uh, stable than, than just a single project. Okay, thank you. And I think all of you uh, will be more than happy to answer more questions later on. Thank you very much for your special interest in Africa.